Welcome back fellow gamers. I want to talk to you today about three things that you should not put up with with your local game store. You know, a lot has been said about supporting local game stores and how you can't play Magic the Gathering at Walmart, Target, or any other big box chains like Toys R Us that might carry some Magic the Gathering product. Well, I don't think that means that we should blindly support our local gaming stores. There are some game stores that actually prey upon this mentality and use it to their advantage. And they will oftentimes say, you know, like we hold events, we support the community. And while that's true, I don't think that gives a local game store a free pass on doing whatever they want and taking advantage of the community. Unfortunately, I've been witness to some pretty shady practices by local gaming stores. And when I was in Montreal, I actually stopped, you know, supporting one of my favorite game stores. I had been buying like product. I bought comic books board games, sports cards, on top of Magic the Gathering, miniatures from, from Hero Clicks. Uh, they had board games, they had all kinds of things. And I've spent, I don't even wanna say how much I've spent at that store throughout the years. Uh, I started buying stuff there back in 1992, 1993 with the Marvel superhero trading cards back in the day. Needless to say, I did spend a lot of money at this game store and they still felt it was appropriate for them to take advantage of good customers or the loyalty that they have built and they've just abused it now I, I will mention three things not all three things apply to this one particular game store but I will talk about the first one and the first one is hiking up prices of sealed product with no rhyme or reason just because there's a increase of demand now that's not to say supply and demand does not figure in to pricing but what happens <laughs> in my situation is me and my friend Dave, we were buying packs of magic and we'd always seen the uh, Alara block like foil boosters that were always available. They're available for $10 Canadian. This is this is a, a while back before they actually exploded in price. And the local game store owner was like, oh, I can't get rid of these. Nobody wants these. And, you know, he just kept going on about how he was stuck with boxes upon boxes of product that he had bought during launch and he wasn't getting any more back. and. They were just sitting there taking up room. So me and my friend Dave were like, oh, you know what? Let's let's buy a few. So we go and we buy a few and we start pulling good stuff. Like the, that set or that block has really great stuff, especially in foils for Commander. Like at the time it was still a no-brainer, but for whatever reason was really not looked upon as something to buy. Maybe it was the price point of like a $10 booster, but we were we were loving it. We were, you know, we were dropping packs and, and money <laughs> pack after pack. We clean out the whole box and the box is full we clean out the whole box the local game store owner takes his box takes the new box unwraps it puts it on top he's like do you guys want to keep going we're like yeah like we're having fun so okay it's now 15 dollars a pack excuse me like didn't you just say they were ten dollars and that you're having a hard time moving them and he's like yeah but you know uh now that's one box less so i've got to hedge and you know if there's gonna be demand i've got to increase it like, well, that's kind of shitty because if it wasn't for us buying them, you'd still have that extra box and they're sitting up taking room in your uh, in your inventory room. <laughs> they're taking up room in your inventory room. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but regardless, like it, to me, that was really shitty. At least wait for us to leave the store and then hike up the price. So we were like, well, no, we're not we're not going to decide to We'll do them for 10 because that's what we started buying them as. He's like, no, it's 15 and, and that's the way it's going to be. But we were like, no, you know, forget it. So we left and we would still go there for like releases, pre-releases and like if we were buying board games or hero click stuff so that we can, you know, transform it into, a, uh, apply it to our hero scape stuff, we would still go to the store because it was a good store. So we walk back in and the price of the packs are now down to $12. So we're like, okay, well, we'll take a few packs of $12, like, okay, $10, $12, not a big difference. It's not the $5 jump. And he goes, he goes, okay, so we buy a few, buy three or four, and then all of a sudden he hikes it back up to 15. So like, no, that's, that's not the way this is going to work. And from there on, I, I told him, like, I'm not, I'm not supporting the store because of this type of practice. Now, that was built in through a long history of incidences that kind of just, this broke the camel's back. Uh, like the, the Commander products, uh, which I'm going to touch on in a second, were overly inflated. Uh, when I was younger, uh, my my father had come into the store with me, and I was I was literally like really young. I, was, I might have been like ten years old, and he had asked the store owner. He's like, "Oh well, I want to buy some hockey cards for my son," 
what's a really good investment? He goes, like, I don't know what he was expecting, like, that answer to be. But the store owner sold him a box of Pro Set. And if you don't know what Pro Set is, it's, like, not even worth it to wipe your ass with. That's how, like, much was printed. He had so much stock that he was trying to get rid of it and just said, you know, this is what you have. This is this is what you should buy. Buy Pro Set. That's the way to go. And, and no, <laughs> it's not the way. In hindsight, like Upper Deck, uh, Fleer, all the extra ones weren't any better of an investment, but he took the worst of the worst, and everybody knew it was the worst of the worst then in the 90s, so. There's a lot more I can make this video a whole rant about things that that particular game store did, but let's cut it there and say that hiking up prices, like, just because he sees somebody that wants to buy extra product and is just trying to milk extra dollars on does not deserve your business find another local game store if that's the case. The next is pre-constructed sealed products that are hiked up in price when they're easily available at big box chains. Now, again, I'm all for supporting local game stores that hold events, that's great, but when you are starting to charge me an extra 10 or $15 based on a dual deck or commander uh, product, it's, it's unacceptable because you could just easily go off. That's not one situation where I find we should blindly support our local game stores. Vote with your wallet. That's one of the things I always preach. And tell them, like, I'm not buying this product because of this. And I've, to I've told my local game stores this before. It's If you want to sell it to me for the same that I can get at at Target, then go for it. I understand you have overage and there's it's a completely different ball game. But if I'm not coming in during your events and buying even more product, Running events, while it might cost a local game store money, they also make money by, by selling plastics, by selling extra packs, uh, drinks, food if they have them. Those are the stores that know how to extract money from their clientele and they do it in a way that is completely acceptable. Hiking up product that is not limited. I'm not talking about like a Modern Masters, uh, Eternal Masters, From the Vault, Commander's Arsenal, those types of things that are limited print run, I completely understand. Those are special. You can you can dictate what those prices are. But if you're charge if you're charging me an extra five bucks for a dual deck because it's got one chase card, no, I'm gonna go to Target. I'm gonna go to Walmart. Or better yet, you don't even have to go to big box stores because yes, they do disenfranchise small and medium sized businesses. I guarantee you, if you're living if you live in a big enough city, you can find that game store that still sells that sealed product for msrp or even below i know i did uh and it's like and that's the thing it's it's really being at the mercy of how big your town size is but a good thing is if you live in a small town you can always order off of you know if it's uh, card kingdom star city games uh ebay you can get them also for a good amount of price although ebay is is fairly risky depending on what you're getting but it's not to say that just because a local game store jacks up the price of a sealed product that's easily available that there is not a limited print run you should not be forced to get that and you should not support that if you're not okay with it. If you're okay with it, by all means, spend the extra money. The last one is box mapping. So believe it or not, box mapping is still a thing. If a card store does not open the box in front of you and then shuffles up the packs and then either slides them into their display or does whatever with them, there is a possibility that they are box mapping. If you don't see how your the sealed product the sealed's broken in front of you and then shuffled up that to me is a warning sign i generally don't buy sealed product from places that don't display their boxes up front and crack them open once a box empties i've seen a lot of stores where they'll come back with a whole bunch of packs and then just stack them into like one of those like loading bins where they just pull from the bottom to me that's just alarm bells i just don't want to deal with that i'm i think i'm i'm more <laughs> I'm more likely to buy off a single booster pack off eBay than I would doing it from a local game store that's just pulling them. Who knows if they've mapped them or not. So that's 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 another situation where I am hesitant on supporting that game store by buying extra pack. Now I won't say I won't buy singles from them or I won't buy a sealed product from them. I just won't buy packs. Maybe if you weren't aware that was happening and that helps you out a bit. Uh, and I hope that this video in itself helps it out now i know this is a very touchy subject for a lot of you and hopefully uh, i don't get too much hate for it if you're spending you work hard for your money we all do and to just give it away because we have to support a local game store is not a mentality 
I'm on board with. And again, that, these are just suggestions. If if you still feel like you should be supporting your local game store, maybe you only have one game store in your area. You live in rural America, rural Canada, rural France. <laughs> I understand that sometimes you know you, you just want a place to play Magic. Uh, I'm I'm sorry that you might be put into that situation. But again, do what's best for you. This is just meant as an eye opening. So if you'd like to look at more videos, uh, you can do so right over here. Uh, we also have a subscribe button right here where you could find out when we either load new videos or when we go live for our live stream. I'd really like to thank you for making me a part of your day. And until next time, good gaming.